But we're going to uplift the name of the Lord this morning.
back to you, Lord, for what you've always given us. Uh, we just thank you for uh, Brother Keith, and we ask for his message to go out into this world to, to save other people. In Jesus' name we pray.
For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven.
Praise God. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Praise God. I know for sure that I am a child of God. There's no doubt. Now, I said this one other time in a sermon. I said it to you again today. Every soul that God creates is not a child of God. It is a creation of God because we know that God created all things and God created man in his image. And that's a fact. Right? We were all created in the image of God. But everyone is not a child of God. In order to become a child of God, you must first recognize that you are a sinner separated from the God who created you. Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Allow him to forgive you of your sin. And then you become a child of God. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. And I pray that you are too. I pray that you have a personal relationship with Jesus today. Because he loves you. He loves you with a special kind of love that only he can love you with. He loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you today. We're going to be in Colossians today. We're going to be in Colossians chapter number 2. We'll read verses 6 through 10 when we get to that point. Colossians chapter number 2, verses 6 through 10 when we get to that point. Has anybody ever tried to work a crossword puzzle? Raise your hand. Anybody? Okay. I never have, okay? Because I know there's no way I'm going to get that thing done, okay? I know that crossword puzzles and me, that's not my, I'm not going to be able to finish it. There's no way that I can finish it. What happens with me and crossword puzzles is that the crossword puzzle remains incomplete. There's no way I'm going to complete it. Some of you guys can, right? There's no way that I'm going to be able to. That crossword puzzle with me trying to work it is me without Jesus. Because without Jesus, I am not complete. There's no way that I can be complete without my Savior, Jesus. Because Jesus completes us. We just talked about how God created us in his image. Amen? God created man in his image. Created woman out, out of a rib from man. Created man and woman in his image. Right? With a spot inside of us. That only he can fit. There's no nothing else that can complete us. There's nothing we can do. Solomon tried everything, right? Remember Solomon? He tried it all, man. He tried all kinds of crazy limit. He tried material things. He tried power. everything on the earth. Solomon tried to fill that part of him up with something. And nothing worked because we are incomplete without Jesus. And when we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, what happens is we become complete. Because now he fills that hole up with Holy Spirit, and now we are complete. What is your personal relationship with Jesus this morning? Are you saved by the blood of Christ today? I told my Sunday school class this morning. People ask sometimes, well, what's the message this morning? Right? What's the message going to be? Look, it's the same message as last week. And it's going to be the same message next week. It was the same message a thousand years ago. And it's going to be the same message a thousand years from now if the Lord don't come back. It is Jesus Christ crucified on a place called Calvary, shedding his blood for forgiveness of sin, overcoming the grave three days later, ascending into heaven, sitting down at the right hand of God, waiting to come back. It is the gospel. That's the message. And it's always the message. And the cool thing is, like I told my Sunday school class, it's like it's brand new every Sunday, right? It's so good because the Lord uses his word that is alive, and he gives us a message every Sunday. But we know the message before we even get to it. It's Jesus, man. Everybody says his name, Jesus. Jesus. It's about Jesus and what he's done and how much he loves you and that he wants a relationship with you. And that he is the only one, listen, he's the only one that can, that can complete you. I tried a lot, man. For 30 years, I tried to be satisfied. For 30 years, I lived like the devil for 30 years. If it was out there, I 
was involved in it for 30 years. Man, that ship would pull in at some port overseas. The first place I would run would be to a bar. Why? Because I was trying to fill that spot up with riotous living like the prodigal son. I was trying to fill that spot up with relationships. I was trying to fill that spot up inside of me with all kinds of craziness and nonsense when nothing could fill that spot with Jesus. The only one. Spent 30 years trying to fill that spot up until, praise God, Holy Spirit made me aware of the fact that I was a sinner and that I was going to go to hell without Jesus, convicted me of my sin, and I, I confessed Jesus Christ as my Lord the third week of January 1997, and that spot got filled up. What's your relationship with Jesus today? Because if you've never confessed him as your Lord, you're not complete. You're not going to be complete until you do. If you can and you will, please stand for the reading of God's word. Colossians chapter number 2. We're going to start reading at verse number 6. Colossians chapter number 2, verse 6. It's not about philosophy as the heading and subscript the Bible say. It's about Christ. Verse number 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Verse number nine. For in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for church. Thank you for Sunday school. Thank you for Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for Chapel Hill Church, God. It's so good to be a part of it. And Lord, I pray right now as I open up the word that you would fill my mouth up. I pray for Holy Spirit to help me to preach what you would have me preach, God. Help me to say what you would have me to say. Lord, I pray for hearts and minds to be open right now. I pray for the Spirit to overwhelm those that are here that don't have a relationship with you. I pray for conviction of sin to take place, God. I pray for Holy Spirit to speak. And I pray for your people to be to, to, to just be willing. To listen, God, if people are saved, I pray that they're ready for a message from you. If people are unsaved, I pray they would recognize it and give their life to you, God. That salvation would come to your house today like it did last week. I pray in the mighty, overwhelming, majestic, powerful name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people say amen. amen. Jesus wants you to receive him and be completed. Verse number six, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord. I receive you this morning, Lord. Jesus wants you to receive him and be complete. If you're lost, he wants you to receive him as your Savior and be saved and be complete. But I receive you this morning. I receive this morning the message that you have for me, Lord, as I preach. Look, y'all know preachers, we preach to ourselves most of the time as we prepare and study and allow Holy Spirit to show us what to preach. Most of the time, we're just preaching to ourselves because we ain't no better than y'all are. Amen? We're just sinners, just like y'all are. And what we want this morning is we want to understand that Jesus wants you to receive him and be complete. If you haven't, he wants you to receive him and be saved. If you have, he still has a message for you. I want you to receive. I receive your mercy this morning. Lord, you may be here today and you need mercy. I receive your grace. I don't deserve it. I'm undeserving. It's an unmerited favor. I receive your grace this morning into my life. We know that if you're lost today, you are saved by grace through faith. So I receive that grace. You'll never be good enough. Amen. You're not ever going to be good enough to get saved. You're not ever going to be good enough to, to get your relationship with Jesus in order. You need grace, and he gives grace. And grace is sufficient for every day that we live. So I receive your mercy this morning, Lord. I need it. Do you? Do you need grace this morning? I need grace. Do you need grace? I receive your grace. I receive your love this morning, Lord. I know you love me, and I receive that love. He loves me in spite of what I say and how I act. He loves me, and I receive that love. He loves you. He loves you with a special love. He loves you.
loves you. So receive that love this morning. Know that he loves you. I received your word this morning. There's no doubt that the Lord Jesus Christ has a word for you this morning. He's got a word for you. It's his word that we get out and we preach, but it is a word just for you. You come into the house of the Lord this morning, and I talk about it all the time because it's important. Did you come to church this morning expecting the word, right? Because he has a word for you. I received the word you have for me this morning, Lord. I received the message that you have for me this morning. I need forgiveness. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're all sinners. I receive forgiveness because I know that I have fallen short of the glory of God. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that the wage of sin is death. But I praise God, even while I was a sinner, that Christ died for me. Amen. Will you receive forgiveness this morning? Will you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior this morning? Will you allow him to save you today? If you are saved, will you receive that forgiveness and renew your relationship? Maybe your relationship is kind of uh, kind of dry right now. Will you renew your relationship by receiving the forgiveness, by receiving the love? I receive whatever it is that you have for me here today, Lord. That should be our mindset. When we come in to a church service that we're ready to receive whatever he has for us now we know we come worshiping and praising we don't come to get but we get it anyway we come to give him glory and honor and praise and then we receive a message as a result jesus reminds us to walk the walk and not just talk the talk if you're saved by the blood of christ today and i pray that you are you need to be walking the walk not just talking the talk. Verse 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. If you received a grade, if you received a grade for how you walked the walk from last Sunday morning at this time until this Sunday morning, if you were to receive a grade a letter grade. A, B, C, D, E. No E, right? Do we? I don't know. I'm a teacher. We don't have an E, do we? F. Okay. A, B, C. What? Why do we not have an E? Huh? Excellent. Okay. Would you get an excellent grade? Would you get an excellent grade? Would you get a high grade? If you were graded on how you walk the walk between last Sunday and this Sunday, because look, we live in a world that needs salt and light. And it's up to us, those of us that are saved, it's up to us to go into the world and sprinkle salt and shed light. And if we're going to do that, then what we need to do is we need to stop talking the talk inside the building and going out there and not walking the walk because we need to walk in him. The scripture said, we receive him as our savior. Then what we do is we walk in him and we represent him and we go into this world and we share the good news. Every day we live for him and we stand out. Terry Carroll is a Tennessee fan, right Terry? He reminded me this morning, I didn't even know it. He reminded me this morning about how Kentucky lost a baseball game yesterday to Vanderbilt. And he was happy because that put Tennessee in first place, right? I wasn't happy. But here's how we should look to the world. We should look like a Kentucky fan in the middle of a bunch of Tennessee fans. <laughs> right? The only... Yo, Chris is a Kentucky fan too, by the way, just so you know. All right, Chris Renee just joined our church, praise God. But he's a Kentucky fan. We'd stand out if we went to Needham Stadium on a Saturday and we wore a blue shirt, we'd probably get beat up. They might throw some, what'd they throw on the field? Was it like mustard or something? <laughs> Tennessee fan, boy, I think. <laughs> anyway, all right, I, 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 got, I need to get off that. Okay. What we need to do is we need to stand out. 
What we need to do is we need to walk the walk. If I'm a Kentucky fan, I'm a Kentucky fan, regardless if I'm surrounded by Tennessee fans. And if you are saved by the blood of Christ and you are a Christ follower, you are a Christ follower regardless of where you are, regardless of what you're doing. And especially when we leave the Lord's house and go out there where the lost people are so that they can see us, so that we can walk in Him, the Word says. It's time to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Stand out by living for Jesus and walking Him every day, knowing what we do, people see it. We want people to see us walking in Him. Standing out in the world that needs to see His people walking in Him. Jesus wants us to have deep roots. We're talking about being completed. We're saved by the blood of Christ. I pray that you are. If you are saved, He wants us to have deep roots. He wants us to to have very deep roots. Verse number six, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. One of the most important things a church can do is help people have deep roots. Chapel Hill Baptist Church, we have a responsibility to the people that come to Chapel Hill Baptist Church to help God's people to establish roots. Now it's not all of us, because we only have about three, three and a half hours a week. You know, that, that's what we have. That's about what we have. We have Sunday morning, Sunday school, about an hour, 30, 45 minutes an hour. We have Sunday morning preaching, about 45 minutes to an hour. Then we have Wednesday night Bible study, about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, that's all we have. So we're not all, it's not our responsibility by ourselves, but when God's people Come to God's house. It is this good church's responsibility to teach the word of God, to preach the word of God, and to help God's people to get roots. It's our responsibility. And listen, every Sunday school teacher, every teacher on a Wednesday night, it's, it's a calling that God has put on your life to teach the word of God. Every one of us, it's our responsibility. We have the responsibility to teach the Word of God, to get the Word of God out, to have a lesson ready when God's people come into a Sunday school class and teach the Word and help them to get roots because they need roots. We all need roots to go out there. We know the roots hold trees up. Spiritual roots hold your life up. We get roots out of the Word of God, out of the teaching and the preaching and the daily studying of the Word of God. It'll hold your life up. You develop strong roots and a strong faith by being intentional in your daily routine, by your daily commitment, and by your service to the good Lord. You must be intentional in, in getting your roots. Jesus reminds us, we have been taught the Word of God. We've been taught. Let's just be honest, right? We've been taught. Now, we probably, look, we, the teachers and the preachers of God's word here at Chapel Hill Baptist Church, we're sinners just like y'all are. We already said that. We're not going to have a great lesson every time. There's times in Sunday school, man, I, I pray, I prepare the lesson, and I go in and teach it. It's not that good. There's times when I preach and, and, and have, have a preaching service and I preach. It's not that good. Y'all, bless your hearts, bless your sinners' hearts. You lie on the way out. Brother Keith, great job. No, it wasn't. Thank you for lying. Thank you for sinning. Knowing that it wasn't good. Because we're imperfect, right? But you have been taught the Word of God. Amen? As you have been taught, verse 7 says, my prayer is that we are a church that embraces teaching the Word of God. Teaching the Word of God every time the doors open. We put emphasis on Bible study. We get the Word of God out and we preach it like we're doing right now. We have a Sunday school where teachers are preparing. We have a Sunday school where people are getting the Word out and teaching. Because that's not happening in a lot, church. Let's just be honest. In the world we're living in today, there's some great churches out there. But that's not happening in all these churches. Flip your Bible over to, uh, let's go to 2 Timothy. If you have your Bible, this is not going to be on the screens, okay? 2 Timothy chapter number 4. 2 Timothy chapter 
number four. I'm going to give you just a second to get there. Second Timothy chapter number four. Second Timothy chapter number four, verses one and two. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. This is what it says. I charge you therefore, charge you, meaning I'm telling you, do this. It's your responsibility. Verse number two, preach the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. That is the charge that we have. And it's not just the preacher's responsibility to preach the word of God. It is your responsibility to be ready in season and out of season. Be able to speak the word of God and teach the word of God and love people the way that he wants us to. You've been taught the word of God. It's up to you to teach the word of God. But Jesus reminds us this, though. We need to beware of worldly opinions and belief systems. We know it's our responsibility to preach the word of God. We know that. But Jesus reminds us to beware of worldly opinions and belief. Hold your finger right there in 2 Timothy. We're going to go back there. Go back over to Colossians. Okay, so hold your finger in 2 Timothy. Go back over to Colossians. Jesus reminds us to be aware of worldly opinions and belief systems. Verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Beware. That means watch out because something bad could happen. We can be deceived. Look, you can be led astray in this world that we're living in right now. Y'all, that's why the local church is so important. Listen, if you're not a member of a local church, you need to join a local church. If the Lord is calling you to join Chapel Hill Baptist Church, we're going to give an invitation. Come join our church. Why? Because you need to be involved and a member of and serving in and fellowshipping in a church like Chapel Hill Baptist Church that gets the word of God out and preaches the word of God. The local church is important. Can you go to heaven without going to church? Yes, you can. You can. But I'm going to tell you right now, you need to be in church if you're saved by the blood of Christ. If you say you want to be in church. Amen. 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 Come be a part. And, and look, I say this all the time to people. If the Lord is not calling you to be a part of Chapel Hill Baptist Church where we do what the Lord wants us to do, then go somewhere and be a part of the local church. If it's not here, go somewhere. It ain't Chapel Hill heaven. It's heaven. So you find you a good Bible preaching church and be a part of that church. Right? Be a part of the church and beware because you can be deceived without the local church. You can be deceived if you're not a part of a Bible preaching local church. You need to be a part of it because you'll be deceived. Traditions of men, according to the word. It don't matter what I think. Every now and then I slip up and say, I think. When I'm teaching or when I'm preaching, every now and then I slip up and say, I think. And quite honestly, it doesn't matter what I think. What I think is not important, David. It's what the word of God says that is important. What I think about it don't matter because it's in there. It says it. it. You know what it says? It says that there's only one way for you to go to heaven. There is no other way. It is through you confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord, receiving him as your Savior, and you go to heaven. If you don't, you are not going to heaven without a relationship with Jesus. Now, some people think that that's harsh. Doesn't matter what you think. Doesn't matter what I think. It's in there. It's what it says, right? So being a part of a local church is very important because you will be deceived if you're not a part of a local church and you're not getting good Bible teaching and you're not in Sunday school and you're not in Bible study and you're not getting good Bible teaching on a regular basis. You're more easily deceived. 
Church ain't going to save you. Church ain't going to send you to heaven. None of that. I get all that. But you being a part of a church is very important to keep you from being deceived. Because the traditions and ways of the world are not the way of Jesus. Beware. Go back. Here's what's happening in a lot of churches right now in, in the country that we're living in and around the world. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. This is taking place in a lot of churches. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. That's happening all across our country and all across our world. Itching ears, man. And then they work up for themselves preachers that are going to preach what they want to hear. See? And those itching ears get scratched when they come to church. And it is fables. And it is heresy. And it is a dereliction of the pastor's duty when they are scratching itching ears instead of getting the word of God out and preaching the word of God. Because you have to endure sound doctrine. The scripture says very clearly that you have to endure sound doctrine. In verse number three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. It's not easy. Sound doctrine is not easy. You have to endure it because it is true. And sometimes it's hard. Beware. Now, everybody look right up here. I don't know if you're a member of a church or not. Okay? I don't know if some of you are visiting. I understand that. And I'm glad that you're here. Well, make yourself at home. If look, the Lord leads you to Chapel Hill, join the church. Be a part of it. Join the church today if he's calling you to join. You got questions? You want to join? Come up here when we give an invitation. We'll talk about it. And you be a part of the local church this one. Okay? But if you're visiting and you don't have a local church, get you one. Because... There will be people out there that will scratch your itch and ears and give you whatever it is that you want to hear rather than sound doctrine and the truth. Beware. Jesus reminds us he fills us with all we need to be complete. Verse number nine. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the Godhead, or the Ades, meaning deity, or supreme deity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He is the one and only true Godhead. He is the head of all. There is no other gods. There is no other. There is no other God other than him. He is the one and only true God. He is the Godhead, right? And he reminds us that he fills us with all we need to be complete. When we are saved, Holy Spirit indwells and fills us with all we need. When we need comfort, praise God, he gives us comfort. When we need peace, praise God, he gives us peace. When we need strength, praise God, he gives us strength. He gives us all that we need. He gives us all that we need to feel complete. To not feel, to be complete. When you are struggling... What he does is he gives you what you need in order to deal with the struggle in order to complete you. Because he gives us all that we need to be complete. He gives us blessed assurance. He blesses us, man. He blesses us so good. He gives us all we need to be complete. For me personally, one of my biggest blessings is assurance. It's assurance. And it's so cool to have assurance. It's so cool to know that I'm saved and I'm not going to be unsaved. It's so cool to know that I have been saved by the blood of Christ. And there's no doubt that I am going to heaven when it's all said and done. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen? 
I'm assured I have blessed assurance. And it is a blessed assurance that I have. And he gives us all that we need. To be. Jesus completes us. He completes us. We won't give an invitation. Verse number nine. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Jesus completes us. It's so awesome to know that we have the answer to be incomplete. We have the answer. We know that Jesus is the answer to complete us. We know whatever it is that we need, that he gives it to us. We know that he provides for all of our needs. He completes us. Where are you today in your relationship with Jesus? I don't know why you're here. I'm glad you're here. Praise God that you're here. If you're here today and you are incomplete and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, will you please allow Jesus Christ to save your soul today? You come and confess him as your Lord. Let him complete you because you're never going to be complete without him. And he loves you. He loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wants you to allow him to complete you today. You don't have to leave him complete. You may be saved today, but you haven't been living out your life. You haven't been walking the walk. You need to be complete today. Maybe you need to rededicate your life today. Maybe you need to be baptized today. Maybe you need to join the church. Whatever it is, will you allow him to complete you today? Will you receive the message that he has for you today? Grace, love, patience. It is awesome to know that regardless of where we are, and we're all over the place here today, every pew has a broken heart. Dr. Marty Comer says that on a regular basis. Every pew has a broken heart. Regardless of where you are today, will you allow Jesus Christ to complete you? He loves you. Stand if you will. We're going to give an invitation. God, I love you and I praise you. Lord, I thank you for Calvary. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for Calvary. Lord, I thank you for the thief that hung beside of you, that recognized that you were the Messiah, and you saved him on the cross, and you said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. God, I thank you for the thief. Lord, I thank you for the third week of January, 1997, when I confessed you as my Lord. God, thank you for salvation. Lord, I thank you for Chapel Hill. I thank you for every person in the church house this morning, God. Work in a way that is clear, and I pray that your people are overwhelmed by your spirit. I pray for souls to be saved, lives to be changed. I pray that you would have your will during this invitation. God, I love you. Thank you for loving us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all come.